Hey, what's up everybody? Dirty Markor here, previously known as DRT32. Welcome back to my channel, and we are going to start a new series today. We're going to play Vintage Story. Now, this is, uh, as of time recording, version 1.15.5. Uh, so I don't know if any of you have ever played. If not, this will be a little bit of a tutorial because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to explain as much as I can as I go. Uh, but it's it's essentially a Minecraft style survival crafting game. Uh, it, I believe, began as somewhat of a mod for Minecraft before the developers decided they were better off just making their own game from the ground up. So you'll see a lot of inspiration from Minecraft. Uh, let's just jump right into uh, creating a new world. Let's see, we're going to go with something. Well, we're going to go with the standard, but I'm going to make a few little tweaks here. Uh, we're going to, I guess, standard customize is what we're going to do. All right, I think we have everything we need set to where we need it. Uh, just a quick recap here. I did everything normal. Uh, however, I did enable, uh, here it is, micro block chiseling, and where was the other thing? Well, micro block chiseling was the main one I wanted to get in here, and also the pro pick node search radius. That's an advanced pro pick. Uh, pro pick is the prospecting pick. That's uh, what that is all about. So we're going to apply those settings. Let's uh, see. Let's name it... Um, Dirty Markor uh, Reserve. I don't know. <laughs> That's it's gonna be our own personal reserve. Here we go. We're gonna create the world. Okay, here we are. So right off the bat, we're gonna have our character creation screen. Uh, we have these new voice types in this in this mode, which are interesting. I'm not sure how much I like it. We'll just do something like that. We'll just leave that alone. All right, so uh, skin tone. What color skin do we want to have? I'm kind of partial to like, uh, like a gray. I don't know why. Well, you know, maybe we should do it like a, like a bright blue. How about that? We'll do that. Uh, kind of. None of this really matters. This is all obviously just customization for per personal preference reasons. There's a lot of hair types, uh, facial expressions. This, none of this really matters in single player too much because you won't be seeing your own characters that much. But it's nice that you have these options. So the more important part is our classes. So in this playthrough, I'm going to be just doing commoner. Uh, there's no positive or negative traits on this character, and I feel like that's pretty useful when you're playing single player, at least the first time around, so you don't have to deal with any headaches. Now, there are some cool advantages and disadvantages to each class. The hunter, for example, uh, has uh, increased range damage and accuracy and more animal loot when harvesting and faster harvesting speed. Faster in movement speed in general and has an exclusive craftability of special bows and arrows. Now, that's really nice, um, but he also has a negative to melee damage and negative to ore drop rate, which, I don't know, to me, is, the ore drop rate's a, a hard one to swallow. Uh, Malfactor is basically, a, I guess, a, a soldier of sorts, um, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, or maybe it's more like a rogue. Anyway, it's a foraging rate uh, and wild crop drop rate, which is, I guess, all good things. Drop rate in general for whatever that means. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but 10% rusty gear drop rate, 5% chance to collect cracked vessels. Oh, that's interesting, too. Uh, furtive, negative 20% animal seeking range. Again, some of these I'm not 100% sure what they really mean, but um, you got these negatives as well. You got negative 2.5 health points, negative 25% bow drawing strength. I guess it just means that your arrows will have more of a drop to them. 
and negative 15% melee damage. Uh, Clockmaker is pretty good in the sense that you can reduce how many gears it takes to repair a temporal uh, translocator or whatever they're called. Um, we won't be seeing any of those likely in the first episode here. Uh, they do have an increase in damage against uh, mechanical type monsters. There's only a few that I'm aware of and they're pretty deep kind of later game. Um, so again, the reduced temporal gear cost for translocator repairs plus 10% walk speed. I didn't realize he was faster. Less health points, less draw, bow, draw, bow drawing strength and less melee damage. Blackguard, now this is the warrior type, that's right. So this is a soldier. So he's got plus 20% melee damage, plus 10% armor durability, plus 10 mining speed, which is good. Uh, plus five health points. Merciless exclusive craftable blackguard short sword. So a special sword. Plus 30% hunger rate. So you go through food much faster. Nearsighted is negative 15% ranged damage. Negative 10% loot from cracked vessels and negative 15% loot from foraging. And negative 20% wild crop drop rate. So, oh, and then there's the new class. This just came out this patch, actually. The, the tailor. Um... So it has an has he has his or she or you know they have an exclusive craftable sewing kit, uh, which is to make clothes I think and or to repair clothes, um, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, and then then you've got plus ten armor durability, negative ten percent loot from foraging, negative two health points, negative ten percent mining speed, negative ten percent animal loot, and negative twenty five percent animal harvesting speed. So I'm gonna stick with calmer just for the sake of not having to worry too much about those kind of things, those negatives and stuff. This looks like a pretty decent start of a seed. So we'll just, uh, we'll just get start going. So first thing you're going to kind of want to do is get sticks and flint. Those are going to be, Ooh, don't fall down the holes either. We're going to need to make some tools right off the bat. And the first tool we're going to want to try to make, uh, before anything else is knives. And I'll show you why in a moment. So let me go find some flint. And when I, I'll make sure you see what the flint looks like when we get there. Okay, here we are. Here is some loose flint. I think you can just pick it up by right clicking, it looks like. Yeah. You can also break it. I, I have a habit of just breaking everything and then uh, picking it up that way. Uh, so we have our first piece of flint. Now we'll want multiples of these because we're going to be making many things. However, for the short term, I will just show you exactly how this works. We're going to make a knife. So what you do is you have the flint equipped in your uh, right hand or in your hand. And you're going to want to crouch, right click on the ground. And it'll bring up this uh, recipe for tool heads. We're going to select the flint knife. And then you're going to use a stone or other flint in your hand. And you're going to... Just chisel out the shape of the knife that you're going to be using as a tool head. I don't like that sound. There's a wolf nearby. Don't want to be attacked right now. You can just knock these out. And now you've got yourself a couple knives. Uh, at least the heads of knives. And you're going to combine those with the sticks to make your knives. All right. Now that we have some knives, we're going to collect some cattails we're gonna need these for storage purposes as of right now we have zero inventory uh, we just have what's on our belt so what we're gonna do is we're gonna harvest a bunch of these cattails um, I think they're called Cooper's Reed yeah Cooper's Reed I'm just gonna collect a bunch of these and we're going to craft us some baskets to carry more stuff so this is definitely one of the first things you want to do in the game here so i'm gonna collect these up and when i got enough i'll show you how to make those baskets okay i think i have enough to at least get a few uh made here i'm not gonna worry about getting all four slots filled at this point at the moment because there are some wolves nearby i keep hearing them and seeing them. It looks like there's a wolf pup swimming this way, which 
you know, uh, the wolf pup is not a threat, but the, the parent, the parents are for sure. So let's just stand over here. Hopefully we're, we'll stand up here a little bit. We're, we'll be out of view here, I think. So we have four, what are like considered storage slots or backpack slots or whatever you want to call them. And we are going to make some baskets. Now there's a way to, to be able to see all this in game like easily. So if you at any time, just press H, you bring up a survival handbook with guides and also recipes. Uh, an easy way to also know how to craft things is when you hover over an item, you can press H while hovering over it, and it'll tell you what you can make with that material. So in this case, it's an ingredient for all these different things. We're going to select the hand basket, and it'll show us how to craft the hand basket using these materials. So we're going to do two in the, these slots like so uh, to create a hand basket. Take the hand basket, drop it into one of these slots, and that's three inventory slots that this basket provides. So we're going to just do that. Uh, oops. Two more times. All right, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll just get those in place now. Okay. Now that we have our inventory expanded to the point where we can actually start gathering things. I guess the next step would be to find some food because down here, um, well, you can see here we have our nutrition stuff, which we'll go over that in a minute. But down at the bottom right hand of your screen, kind of center bottom right, is your food bar. Um, we're doing okay, but we're going, it, it, we will be getting hungry here soon. So, First thing we kind of want to do is make sure we have some food available to us now one thing you can do is with these reeds when you harvest it once you get you, you get your just typical reed you harvest it a second time with a knife in hand it has to be with a knife you can collect the roots now you can use those roots then to replant them in a place that you would want them because these are a resource you will be using kind of throughout but also what you can do with these roots as you can cook them up on a fire pit. So I'm just gonna grab a couple, just to grab a couple of those for now, just as a, uh, a backup. But what we want to do, I guess, is maybe set up a, a basic uh, base of operations, I suppose, where we start getting into uh, the other things, which that being said, we need more flint. So let's be on the lookout for some flint. Um, we can always use more sticks. Uh, and once we find a little bit more flint and a nice little place to set up home, set up a, a, a base of operations anyway, we'll get back to you. But this looks like a pretty decent area to, generally speaking, start building. A little lack, lackluster on the trees, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. All right, I'll be back with you guys as soon as I find a nice spot and get some flint. Oh, real quick, I want to just note something as well. This is the first time I've seen these on the on the surface, but there's these resource deposits on the surface. Usually you'll see copper and stuff. And one of the things you're going to want to do when you come across these, at least early on especially, is to make take note of what they are. These are olivine bits, right? And you can press M to bring up your map, and you'll see your explored area. You are this little white circle in the center. If you right-click on the map, you can name and create waypoints. I'm going to call this Olivine. We're going to just make it, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, what can I, we'll just do green, even though it's going to be hard to see in the background. Select an icon, and you can also pin or unpin the uh, waypoint. But there, we can see that there's Olivine here. Uh, this is a resource that's not needed for quite a while, but it is important to note that there are these surface resources that you can uh, collect and also can mark on the map so you can come back to them later. And that also represents that there is more of this resource below the surface directly underneath. So it's always good to mark those resources. All right, back to the search. Well, I have found one went so far however 
I have come across my first berry bushes, so let's talk about those real quick. They, during the spring and summer months, will be, uh, they make berries. You can right click on them to harvest, and these are going to be a very useful source of food early on. Now, I'm not going to do it at the moment, but one thing I like to do early on in the game is collect the bushes as I find them. And bring them with me to wherever I'm going to set up my base of operations and then just replant them. Because they are a useful source of uh, snacking food at the very least at the very beginning of the game. So I'm having trouble finding flint, honestly. Uh, which is not something I was expecting. So I'll keep on searching. And uh, before daylight starts to come down, we'll have a base started up. Okay, so I haven't traveled very far. I still have only found that one piece of flint, but I think that at least that one piece of flint will be enough to showcase the next thing I'm going to want to make. Um, however, there is a trader here, and this might be a good spot to build. Um, having a trader nearby is always useful. I don't know what kind of trader he is, so let's go take a look. Hello, sir. Alphonse. So we have a luxuries trader here. Um, I think that's a good thing. What you can do with traders is you can buy and sell and you'll be using what are called rusty gears as a currency. We don't have any currently, but it's nice to know that we can sell these materials off for rusty gears and then buy these materials with rusty gears. So you got some glass, some colored glass and other things. We got at least a, a, a one practical item, a, a long blade. Um, I do believe that luxury traders can um, have chandeliers, which is a light source that is only able to be purchased from traders. You cannot craft them. So it's nice to have that. So we know we're going to build around here. I'm going to... Oh, here's another piece of flint. Perfect, perfect. Um, we're going to make a couple more tools. Now, with, with flint stone age tools, there's not too many things you can make, but you can make... Uh, the most essentials for getting started. So we're going to make a uh, see an axe and a shovel, I think would be the, the two things we're going to want to make right off the bat. I would say that the to make some spears would be a good idea, and we will definitely be doing that. That will be our way of hunting and or defending ourselves from uh, enemies. I can hear some enemies actually already. <laughs> But first and foremost, I want to get some shelter. Oh, we got to use a stone to chisel these out. So we've got our shovel head and we have our axe head already crafted. And then we just go, we're just going to use the, uh, the head on top of a stick. And there we go. Let's just keep that in there. Let's just organize a little bit here. All right, so we have ourselves a flint axe and we have ourselves a shovel. So one thing we're going to want before night falls, uh, if we want to cook up any cattails or anything, is we're going to need firewood. So let's just quickly go through the process of chopping down a tree and making firewood. And we'll use this tree over here since it's easy, accessible. Now, the branches themselves are worth trying to chop up a little bit. Now, I'm going to use a knife on here since I have two knives and, and you know, a little bit to spare. When you break the branches, um, if they have a, they can drop sticks. If they've got like a, like kind of like a woody branch like icon in it, like this one does, that should drop a stick. If it doesn't, it could be nothing, but it could also be a seed. Um, and obviously you'll want the seeds to be able to replant. Trees are very valuable resources, but what other the other reason why you might want to consider trimming the branches up before you chop down the tree is, is uh, that it reduces how much damage your axe will take when you chop it down. And I'll explain that here in a minute because it's different from Minecraft. In Minecraft, you just break one block at a time in a tree. In Vintage Story, you, you can hit anywhere on the tree, um, but... Basically, you hit the bottom the bottom log, and the, depending on how much of a tree there is to chop down, the longer it will take, and it chops the whole tree down in one go, which is a great quality of life, uh, you know, feature. However, 
the bigger the tree is, the more damage your axe will take in the process. And since we are limited right now on resources to make axes, we kind of want to avoid taking too much damage on our axe right off the bat. So we have a little bit of wood here. I'm just going to grab this one little tree here as well. And then we're going to make some firewood. I guess I should probably keep my my uh, knife in somewhat decent condition. So let's chop down this tree and then we'll make some firewood and we'll use our shovel to kind of dig out a little bit of a little hidey hole in the side of one of these hills here. The first base. Okay. So now that we have some wood, uh, let's see, where would be a good place to start a base? We have our trader nearby. Where is that trader? There he is. It's over there. We want like a little bit of a... Let's, let's go over here behind the trader. Depending on if there's mostly dirt back here, because we, we can't dig through stone as of yet. So we're going to want to be able to have enough of a dirt material to work with. So we're going to bust out our shovel. Let's go down to, I guess, ground level is a good place to start. We're going to dig into here and just grab a bunch of dirt. We're gonna, we can use this dirt temporarily just to build up walls where necessary as well. But we're going to see how much of this we can actually get into the side of a hill. Okay, our shovel's almost broken, but we should have enough dirt here and a little bit of an indentation that we can work with to make our our first little, you know, hobbit hole, as you as you, as you will. We just want to be protected at night and have a safe place to cook up some food and to store some of our goods. So. This is not a not a symmetrical, which you know <laughs> is a pet peeve of mine, but that's all right. This is all temporary. We're going to be building out much more in the future. This will just get us going. So we now have a little bit of a hole to hide into, and where we can go out and collect resources and come back, and also to make a make a fire. I may need to go get some more resources here. Um, but before we do, I'm going to see if I can make a singular uh, storage vessel called a reed basket. And I don't think I can. It's going to take at least, oh man, uh, a bit, a bit. So we're going to go collect some more reeds and get enough for that. And we'll collect some of the, the cattail roots as well. So we'll have something to cook up to eat to make it through the night. Uh, and the time is 1753, which equates to what is that like a... Uh, almost 6 p.m. We got a little bit of daylight left. Let's try to make use of it and get some get some of the things we need to make it through the night. So I'll see you back back at the back at home in, in just a little while. Well, it looks like I just broke my uh, my knife. I don't know if I have enough cattails here to make our first basket, which we do. So let's make one. I didn't get around to harvesting any of the roots and we are starting to get hungry and it's starting to get late. We're gonna find some more flint, wherever we can. Luckily we found two right there and we're gonna make ourselves some more uh, knives and collect more of these cattails and their roots. got some more knives and we're cutting down more cattails i'm gonna get some of these roots before i forget it is starting to get dark out so we need to get back to back to home here quickly i'm gonna grab these roots right now oh and there's a wolf leave us alone wolf
Okay, we are back home. We are running out of uh, food in our belly. There is a baby rabbit inside the house. I don't think they'll provide us any meat, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but what we need to do is make a fire pit. So we're going to use our knife to harvest some of this grass. We only need one at the moment. We're going to use that one piece of grass. We're going to crouch and right click, and it starts a fire pit in construction. Now what we need now is firewood. So we're going to take... Actually, we're going to take all of our logs here and we're going to put an axe over top of it in our crafting window and that will bring that'll make us firewood and we're just going to make all the firewood we can because we're going to need it all uh and what we do now is we'll take the firewood in hand and we're going to crouch and right click to add it to the fire pit until you have i think four uh on it and it becomes a actual fire pit oh i forgot what we need is a fire starter it's been so long since i started over that i forgot that there are certain uh, requirements to make the initial fire so we need to make a, uh, a fire starter let's take a look at how we make one of those there it is two sticks and grass all right so we're going to cut one more piece of grass off the ground here i apologize for being so dark and then it was some sticks and grass right was that how that worked fire starter was uh, two sticks and some grass there we go we got ourselves a fire starter so we're going to use this on the fire here and i think what is it we just uh oh no not just right click got a crouch right click we're gonna get a fire started and just like that we got a fire i think the uh baby rabbit has found its way out we're gonna block up our doorway for now just to prevent any nighttime creatures from bothering us and we are going to also add a little bit of fuel to this fire and we are going to start cooking up some of these cattail roots because we are about to starve so let's get those cooked up as quickly as we can Cutting it pretty close here. Uh, at least we're not moving out. I think the more that you move, the faster you burn through your hunger. All right, we got our first cattail, first cooked cattail. We're gonna grab that right away and chomp it down. Now, it doesn't provide much, but it's better than nothing. And we've got 13 more cooking up right now, so that should be enough to get us through the night at the least. And that will be day one survived. Let's see what time is it. It is 21.25. Now, we're not going to really have time to sleep tonight. And if we were going to sleep, we would need to make ourselves a straw bed or hay bed or whatever they're called. Uh, a bed, nonetheless. A hay bed. Um, which is not too difficult to make. It's just a bunch of grass. Um, but we don't have time to do that. We're going to be cooking and eating for most of the night tonight. Just to... Just to stay alive so that is day one and uh i think that we're going to call that one for the first episode so that's that's surviving day one getting their basic tools uh some storage oh and speaking of storage let's place our little storage basket down here we go we got a little place to store store some of our our goods that we don't need to carry around with us all the time all right so that's going to be day one next time we will be seeing what else we can get our hands on we're going to be doing a lot of resource collection for for a bit here and we're going to be looking for the uh, key components to progressing in the game which would be uh, I guess the next step would be primarily uh, copper because right now we're in the stone age we need to get to the copper age before we can start digging actual rock out and stuff so that's episode one thanks for joining uh, we'll see you next time and uh, if you haven't please consider following and liking the episode it really helps especially a small channel like mine so again thank you very much and we'll see you next time bye